It's become a bit of a weekly theme, this one. Players to buy and avoid for Game Week 24. Now, the first player on my list is Zinchenko. I'm pretty sure I've featured him in the couple of videos like this I've done previously. But for me, he is playing the most advanced of all the Arsenal defenders. And I think he is the best of the bunch in terms of in terms of defenders from Arsenal to pick from. For me, having spoken to some pretty diehard Arsenal fans who are a bit closer to the club than myself, they consider him to be completely nailed in the Premier League over Tierney. They really expect Tierney to feature in cup games. Reason being is that he just gets so much more involved in the build-up play and he really fits Arteta's style of, of football. He's only 0.3 million more than the cheaper Ben White. I think that's probably worth the price difference. Um, and you can see on the heat map there, he is playing by far and away the most advanced of all the Arsenal defenders. A double, of course, in 25 against Leicester and Everton. I think those are two fixtures you could foresee an Arsenal clean sheet in. And importantly, they also don't blank in game week 28 like some other teams are going to do. And you can see over the next five or so um, fixtures, Zinchenko is expected to score over five points. So, yeah, I think he's a great option going forward and is absolutely a player you should be looking to buy. Next up... <laughs> This guy might be an absolute pain to some FPL managers, but I can't make a buy and avoid video after the double game week 25 announcement without mentioning Darwin Nunes. I just think he's going to hit form soon. I think, in my opinion, he needs just one goal to build his confidence and then he'll be absolutely on fire. His underlying numbers are just absolutely astronomical. He's behind only Haaland now in terms of the league, in terms of expected returns per 90. They're still over one, so every 90 minutes he's playing, he's still expected to score or assist at least once, which is just, yeah, only Haaland is, is better than that. So I think it's only a matter of time for me before Nunes gets back amongst the goals. Um, and I think he's a great option going into that double game week 25. I see Crystal Palace and Wolves as fixtures he could definitely score in. And next up is a player that I admire quite a lot, actually. He seems to have not completely transformed Chelsea, but certainly improved them a hell of a lot defensively. And that's Baddy Ashiel. As I was saying, he's, he seems to have completely cemented his place in the, the Chelsea team in, after really improving them defensively. And I think he's pretty much the cheapest starting, uh, the, you know, the cheapest defender you can back to start pretty much every game. And the reason being I think you can back him to start every game is he's not been included in the Champions League squad. Not entirely sure why that's happened, but for me in terms of FPL, that can only mean more Premier League minutes. He's had three, well it says three and three there, obviously he conceded against West Ham, so that's a bit cheeky. But going into that, he's kept three straight clean sheets. And I think West Ham was just one of those games where, you know, you're likely always going to get a tough game at the London Stadium. Um, and yeah, it just so happened that they conceded. And I think if you were comparing him to other Chelsea defenders as well, I would say his expected minutes are better than James. But obviously he has less attacking upside, but I think makes up for it in terms of price. I think if Badia Shiel is the one Chelsea defender you can um, afford, he's absolutely the best option. And for me as well, just analysing Chelsea's fixtures, say analysis, it's not really analysis, you just look at them on paper and you think, these are winnable games for Chelsea in games that they could keep a clean sheet in. And that's long term as well, it's not just the next five games that you see there. The list goes on and on in terms of non-top six teams that they play. So yeah, Chelsea got a really nice run and I think Badia Shiel is a great option. Okay, and my next player that I think you should be buying, I mentioned him when going through Bally Shield, and that's Reese James. For me, he seems to be back fit and starting regularly for Chelsea. As I was saying when I was going through Bally Shield as well, the long-term fixtures for Chelsea are fantastic. I think they really only play one top six team in their next 10 games, and that being Tottenham, which I think is a, a winnable game. Maybe not a clean sheet game, but certainly one you could foresee Reese James getting an attack and return in. Um, yeah, I think Chelsea seem capable now of keeping clean sheets. I know they've just come off the West Ham game on Saturday and Chelsea conceded in that one. But I think with the signing of Badia Shield, they do look to be a lot more solid defensively. And for Rhys James, his underlying numbers in terms of attacking returns are really, really good. He's got 0.33 expected returns per 90. So that means one in every three games he plays, he's going to get a return in according to the underlying numbers. Look at those expected points there. I think they're looking pretty good. And I just think the upside with Reese James is so exciting. He's almost impossible to ignore. On to players to ignore now. And I actually think Newcastle defence could be sellable. Um, certainly 
Um, Trippier is probably one of the best assets in FPL and he really shouldn't be going anywhere from your team, especially considering you've probably gained quite a lot of funds from, from just holding him. But the rest of the Newcastle defence, I think you could make a case that they're sellable now. They've got a tough run of fixtures coming up from 24 to 26. They've conceded in their last two Premier League games. I think the absence of Bruno Gomerez has really impacted them. Um, he's suspended until the beginning of March, which I think is game week 27. Could be wrong there. But yeah, I think Bruno Gomerez injury is having a, a, a real impact on them. And I said I wouldn't be rushing to sell, but... Maybe moving from Newcastle defence like to Man City defence, like I said, or if you don't already have three Arsenal players, which you probably should already have for game week 22 and 23, I would definitely be looking to sell my Newcastle defenders for someone like a, a Zinchenko or an Akanji. I think that would be a good move, and especially when you look at those clean sheet odds, 24 to 26. they got Liverpool, a blank, and Man City. I don't really foresee a clean sheet coming in those three game weeks, which makes me think you know, the likes of Botman, Shah and Byrne, who really are only going to get points for a clean sheet from, I think they're probably sellable. Sounds like I'm hating on Newcastle at the moment. I promise I'm not, but I just think that Almiron has, has had his time in people's FPL teams. Now, I know he scored a goal against Bournemouth, um, and that's great. I think that's a final hurrah for players that haven't really. He's got Liverpool, a blank, and Man City coming up. Tough fixtures for Newcastle. I think he's going to struggle to really get any attacking returns in those games, and I think there are better options in the midfield for that kind of price. So yeah, for me, I think Almiron is a sell. Um, reason being as well, the form he was in before the World Cup, which is why a lot of people picked him in their wildcard teams, I just think has gone away. And it was definitely a, a purple patch. Um, he was massively outperforming his underlying numbers. And he's just gone back to the norm now in terms of how he's been playing. It's nothing like, yeah, against the guy's ability. It was just obviously a, a clear purple streak before the World Cup and it's just run out. So I think now is the time to be selling Miguel Almiron. And the final player on my list is Gabriel Martinelli. Now, I'm an owner myself. Um, I risked it this week and didn't take a hit to move him sideways for another Arsenal midfielder. And unfortunately, he came off after, I think, 67 minutes. And Trossard scored within about three minutes of coming on. So I'm in a little bit of doubt now for him starting the Man City game. Um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, the general point with Martinelli, I think his minutes are obviously going to be shared with Trossard now. I think they're not probably equal ability in terms of players. I think Trossard is fantastic, as is Martinelli. And yeah, I just think throughout the season now, Martinelli's more likely to be subbed after 60 to 70 minutes, if he even starts. And yeah, the underlying numbers for Saka, Odegaard and Inketi are, are simply better. Um, so they're, they appear to be more likely to get the attacking returns now rather than Martinelli. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, a sideways move, if you haven't made it already, to someone like Odegaard, Saka or Inketi, I think is the way to go. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful. As always, I'm definitely open to people who have got different opinions to me. So if you agree or disagree with anything I've said there, please let me know in the comments. It'd just be interesting to see what other people think. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like rating, subscribe to the Golden Goal channel because we've got plenty more FPL content coming your way for the rest of the season. I'll see you in the next video.